All right. Well, thank you all for hanging out with me this afternoon. The sun is shining, so I'm sure you all would rather be doing many other things, but you taking your time to hang out here and learn more about how to get better accounting systems, how to do your invoicing, and ultimately make sure you get paid. So you know what? This is the best place to be right now. So I'm super excited. My name is Manny Cosme. I run a company called CFO Services Group. I'm super passionate about helping small businesses get better with managing their finances. I'm super happy that the DSLBD has um, asked me to present on this topic and many other topics, um, just their commitment to ensuring that everyone has good financial practices is just amazing to me um, and rare. I mean, you, you really don't see that. So congratulations. Thank you, DSLBD, for this opportunity. Um, so what we're going to do, here's our agenda for today. Um, we're going to talk a lot about invoicing, and I believe we have 90 minutes. So, Kate, keep me on track here. I think we end at 4 o'clock. Is that correct? Hopefully. That's correct. Okay, cool. So, I will talk fast. Uh, if you have any questions, I have a lot of material here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask it. I would prefer if you put it in the chat, and then I'll stop after every major section so we can kind of get through the questions. And certainly at the end, we'll have room for a lot more questions. But this is what we're going to be doing. We'll talk about accounting software. We'll talk about, then we'll do a lot of QuickBooks, looking at QuickBooks, so you all understand how that works. Uh, submitting invoices, generating invoices, and some useful reports we can look at and whatnot around invoicing, all right? So this is being recorded, so if you miss anything, watch the recording and feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to help you all answer any questions, any lingering questions that you all have. All right, so uh, we had opening remarks from uh, Director Whitfield here, so which we heard, so thank you, Kate, for that. Um, so again, Manny Cosme, I'm the founder and CEO of CFO Services Group. We are in a, a management accounting firm, which means that we focus on bookkeeping and financial strategy for small businesses and nonprofits. We don't do taxes. I don't like taxes. If anyone from the DC Department of Taxes is listening in, sorry, but uh, tax is not my thing. What I like to do is manage money. That's what I really like. Um, so that's what we do day in and day out, and it's a ton of fun. Um, so uh, you're in the right spot for that here. All right, so let's jump into some stuff here. So why do we want to use accounting software? Let's talk about that. So according to Intuit, who are the makers of QuickBooks, that software program, QuickBooks, 20% of small businesses fail within the first year and 50% of businesses fail within the first five years, which is an amazingly staggering statistic. And just take a second and really just let that soak in. I mean, one in two businesses does not make it past their first five years of business. It's just amazing to me. And it's really sad, actually. I mean, raising is probably not the right word, but it's just really sad. But your odds of success go up 89% if you work with an accounting professional. Okay. Now, why is that? Is that because we're amazing people? No. Well, we are amazing people. But uh, it's really because what our job is, is to help you understand the money in your business and money, as we all know, is the lifeblood of a business. Okay. It's, it's like the blood in your veins. It's what helps a business do what it needs to do. It's not the point of the business, but it is, it is an integral part to the business. And so if you don't understand your money, you will end up going out of business. I and mean, that's just kind of the way it is. So the better you can understand how the money is flowing through your business, the better you can plan and make better decisions. And as we're going to see here, Make sure you All right, there we go. Sorry about that. It took a moment. No problem. Yeah, so make sure, please uh, keep yourselves muted, of course, uh, unless you want to ask a question. I'll call on you. All right. So, Odds of success were 89% if you're working an accounting professional. All right. So, um, so quality accounting. So let's go a little bit deeper. Quality accounting helps to answer questions such as these. And we see a bunch of examples here that I'm sure you're looking at and like, oh yeah, I need to know that, right? Who owes me money? Which is something that we're going to talk about today. You want to know that. Who's going to owe, who still owes me money? If I submit an invoice, did I get paid on that? How much cash will I have next month? I definitely want to know that. Do I have too many expenses? How much can I pay myself? Um, how are my employees doing? Are they, are, am I paying them too much? Am I not paying them enough? Are they efficient? How's my pricing? 
Do I need to borrow money, right? All these questions, as you can see, are questions that you need to be asking yourself in your business all the time. How do you get the answers to these questions? Quality accounting, okay? That's what it's all about. It's literally the information of your business here. Okay, so that being said, there's a lot of information that you have to keep track of and you're not gonna keep it all in your head. I mean, certainly if you're a brand new business day one, maybe you can keep it in your head, but as you start to grow and your business starts getting more sophisticated, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to keep all this information in your head. So that's why we have bookkeeping software. Okay, bookkeeping software exists to help you track all this information and be able to pull reports and whatnot, which we'll get into here towards the end, okay? So you really wanna make sure that you're using bookkeeping software to start amassing all this information. You put it in the system and then you can start pulling all sorts of really important reports that over time you can use to better manage your business, okay? Now, what we're gonna, uh, the, the so there's, and there's several bookkeeping programs, as you can see here, there's zero QuickBooks, FreshBooks. Okay. What we're going to be focusing on here today is QuickBooks. So we're going to be using QuickBooks as an example on how we're going to do invoicing. That being said, that is by no means the only quick, the only bookkeeping program you can use. QuickBooks happens to be the number one bookkeeping program for, for small businesses, but it is not the only bookkeeping program for small businesses. So I'm going to show you screenshots using QuickBooks. But the processes I'm going to explain go across any bookkeeping system. This is more about the underlying bookkeeping principles rather than the software itself. Okay, we're just going to use that as an example just to illustrate how we're going to do this. So I want you all to know that if you don't have QuickBooks, if you use something else, or maybe you're even using an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, well, if you're using an Excel spreadsheet, get off of that. I'm going to tell you that right now. Get into, a, get into at least one of these programs here, if anything, okay, or something more industry specific. But I do want you using bookkeeping software. It's very incredibly important to do that. Okay. So um, that being said, um, we are going to do that. If you don't have uh, bookkeeping software right now, um, there's this URL, and I, I put it in the chat as well. Um, if you go to that URL, you'll be able to pull up a test file, and you can follow along. Do it right now as I'm talking. As I'm talking, pull up a web browser, go to this URL right here, and you'll pull up a sample file for QuickBooks so that as I start going through some of this, you can do it side by side along with me. We know that if you actually not only look at what's going on on the screen and you hear what I'm saying, but you actually do it, tact tactily do it, then you will actually absorb it more and be able to replicate it on your own. So it's important that you take a second and actually pull up this test file and do it along with me, okay? So please do, again, I put it in the chat, or if you have your own file, of course, pull that one up as well. If you happen to have QuickBooks already, you are already ahead of the game. So pull up your file and let's jump in and get to doing some of this stuff, all right? So any questions so far, by the way, anything pop up? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on to our next agenda item here, which is about creating customers. So we're going to start getting into QuickBooks now and start talking about how to actually generate your invoicing. All right. So before we can generate an invoice, well, okay, we need to sell something, right? So we invoice someone because we sold them something. All right. Well, before you can sell something, you need to sell it to someone. Okay. So in the world of finance, we call that a customer. All right. You can be a customer of someone. So if I'm buying something from someone, I'm their customer, right? We all know what that means. Okay. So before you can sell something, you need a customer. So a customer is a person or a business who pays you money. So in other words, it's a person or a business that you're selling something to. So if you run a bakery, someone walks in the door, they buy a cup of coffee, they're your customer, right? Okay, these are all examples of customers. So why is that important? Because a sale is always connected to a customer, okay? So in a bookkeeping system, it will always require that you have a customer in your system first before you can enter a sale, okay? This is important so that we can track who's paying you money, right? Who's your most, we can, and we can answer questions like, who's your most valuable customer? Who hasn't bought from you in a while? Do you have an invoice out there that isn't, hasn't been paid? And who is that invoice to? 
Okay, these are powerful pieces of information that you need so you can start thinking strategically about your business. So for this reason, you need to set up your customers first in your bookkeeping systems before you can enter sales into your bookkeeping systems. Okay, so let's learn how to do that first, and then we'll move on to actually creating the invoices and get to the fun part, which is then getting paid and you getting cash in your bank account. That's the fun part. Okay. All right. Well, it's all the fun part. Isn't it? I mean, sales is just fun. Maybe we can talk about payments next vendor payments. That's not so much fun, but it's important. All right. So, <laughs> so in QuickBooks, here's a screenshot of QuickBooks. So again, if you're using the test file or you have your own file. This is what this is what QuickBooks looks like, and this actually is uh, the the test file, by the way. So if you pull that up, this should be exactly what you're seeing in the test file. Okay, so this is what it looks like. All right, so QuickBooks sell, sets up these things called centers, which help us kind of define and group information. So this is what's called the sales center, and there's a lot of really great information about the things that you're selling. All right. So we're going to go there. So first, what we're going to do is click on on the left hand side here. You're going to find the word sales and you're going to click on that. Gonna bring you into the sales center. All right. Now, the sales center is divided into five different tabs, which you can see at the top of your screen here. So the first tab will show an overview of some of the additional setup steps that you can take uh, as a small dashboard, which you can basically ignore. Okay. Uh, so, a couple of things here you can see and definitely take your time over here to take a look and see at all the great information that you can find. What we're going to focus on here is this tab here called customers. Okay, when you click on this tab, it shows you a bunch of information about all the customers that you have created in your QuickBooks file. So, again, these are people or businesses that you're selling things to. All right. Now, what I'm going to show you is how to set up a new customer. So if you don't have someone in your system yet that's bought something from you for the first time, click on this new customer button. And then a screen's going to pop up that shows you that something like this. Now, again, this is being recorded. So if you're watching the recording, make sure you, you keep a copy of the recording. And then on your own, as you start to do this work, you want to reference the recording here so you can see how this is done. Okay. And then reach out to me if you have any questions. All right, so this is the new customer screen here. All right, um, now I'm gonna tell you right here, just at a glance, you can see there's a lot of really great information that a system like QuickBooks can help keep track of for you. This is one of the reasons why you want to use a computerized accounting system like QuickBooks. It can hold a lot of valuable information. You don't have to keep it in your head or on a you know sheet of paper or something. All right, so let me walk you through some of the important things that you can do with the customer. First thing is, what's your customer's name, right? So you're going to put in the name of the company. And if there's a particular individual at the company, or if it is an individual, you can put their name here as well. And you can start tracking, you know, who's my contact at this company and whatnot. You could put their email, phone number, website, all that important information there. All right. And then there's these tabs down here that give you spots for additional information. So, for example, What's their address, their billing address versus their shipping address, which of course, if you sell product, you know, that may be different. All right, so you can keep track of that information there. Do you have any notes about this client, this customer that you wanna keep in your system? For example, if they have a birthday or, you know, you wanna put that in there, maybe you can send them something, right? So you can put important notes about the customer. All right. Do they have any specific tax information that you need to keep track of specifically if you have to collect sales tax? Okay. This is where you can store some of that information. Where, where do they have to, you know, where do they have to uh, pay sales tax and whatnot? If they're exempt, what does that look like? Okay. So there's some great information there. That's a whole nother thing we can do by the way. So, all right. Payment and billing. Lots of great information here. How do you prefer to pay? Do they pay by check debit uh, ACH? credit card. Okay. Uh, how do they prefer their invoices be delivered? Do they want them printed? Do they want them mailed, emailed? Okay. What are their terms? What terms are you giving them? Do they have to pay immediately upon receipt of an invoice? Which by the way, I do recommend putting on your invoices. Do they have to pay in 30, 60 or 90 days? Okay. Particularly those of you who do government contracting or contracting with, with larger companies, which is probably why you're here. 
Okay, they will have different terms. You want to capture that information in here so that you don't have to, you know, pull that contract again and have to remember this information. You can put that right in the system here. Okay. Um, so that's good information you can put there. Attachments. This is a really great tool that QuickBooks specifically has where it can help you almost become like a virtual file cabinet as well. So if you have a master contract with uh, a company, with a customer, for example, you can put a, attach a PDF copy of that contract right here. So anytime you want to reference it, you know to go into QuickBooks and pull that customer and there that contract will be. So some really great things, like for us, we put copies of our engagement letters, our master contracts with our clients, right? In QuickBooks here. Okay, so really good stuff here. Okay, and there's a couple other things, of course, you can do. So on your own, you can browse through that and we could be here all day looking at all the little things that you can do. But when you're done and putting the information from your customer, you just wanna click the save button and now you've created a customer. And there you go. It's that easy. Okay. That's how you start creating customers and QuickBooks. And once you create customers, now you can move on to the fun thing, which is selling them things. Okay. Well, I lied. There's actually one more thing that we have to do in QuickBooks. Uh, and this again is common amongst bookkeeping systems. You create the customer. And then the next thing you need to do is create what's called an item. And there's usually a lot of confusion around this. So I'm going to really explain this here. So you understand the point of creating items here. Okay. By the way, let me pause here. What questions do we have? Any questions? I know I'm talking like super fast here, so. No questions? All right, all right. We're making good time here, so I'm gonna slow down a little bit here. Okay, so that's how we create customers. So like I said, before we can actually um, uh, before we can move on to creating the invoice, we have to create the customer, and then we have to create an item. So let's talk about what items are. Okay. So an item is just a fancy word for a product or service that you sell. So it can be a physical piece of inventory that you sell, like I sell, you know, uh, a shoe, I sell a, a coffee or whatever, or it can be an intangible service. Okay. So for example, like I said, a cup of coffee that's sold by a cafe, that's an, an example of an item. A shoe that's sold by a clothing store, for example, is an item, okay? It can also be a service. So a consultation sold by a law firm, for example, is an example of an item. So I'm selling, in that instance, I'm selling my hours. I'm selling my time to you, okay? That's what I'm selling to you. I'm selling a service, okay? So it's, those types of things can also be items, all right? So I say that because there's a common misconception uh, for people that run service-based, uh, there's a common misconception that items only pertain to people that sell physical items, physical items, all right? That's not true. Even services are considered items. So when you use a bookkeeping system like QuickBooks or FreshBooks or Xero, you're gonna see something in there that's going to ask you what these items are. What is it actually that you're selling? What's the thing that you're selling to your customer? And you're going to have to go and create those things that you're ultimately selling to your customer. Okay. So that we can start tracking that. Okay. Oh, I just saw, actually, I just saw a chat. Wait, what was that? Someone asked, oh, items equal SKUs. Yes. So a SKU, right, so a SKU is a way of, um, of inventorying basically an item, right? It's how you specifically, it's an identification number that you put on a specific item. So yeah, if you have physical items, then you can put SKUs on all of them and that's how you can identify them exactly. So that's correct, okay? Of course, if it's a service, you can't put a SKU on a, on a person, so that's not gonna work, right? All right, so uh, let's see here, okay. So when you create an item in QuickBooks uh, or in any bookkeeping system, you have to tie it to a particular, uh, you have to tie it to a particular revenue account. So when you sell the item, QuickBooks know, then knows where to record the revenue that you earned from the sale. Okay, so this is why you have to set up the item first before you can record the sale in QuickBooks so that it knows, okay, you've sold the cup of coffee, 
when you sell a cup of coffee, we're going to tie it to this revenue account in your P&L. So when you pull up the P&L, now you can see how much of that you sold, okay? Or you've sold consulting services. We're going to tie it to this revenue account. So now when you pull up your P&L, you can see how much in consulting services you've sold, okay? So that's why we have to take a second and do this here. So to do this, we're going to click on the sales center again. So we're back into QuickBooks. We're going to click on the sales center. And now we're going to go to the tab that says products and services. Okay, it's that last tab there. And this is what we call the items center. Okay. So again, this dashboard has a lot of really great information, especially if you manage inventory. And by the way, if you do manage physical inventory, QuickBooks is fantastic about helping you really manage all those pieces. I mean, you can see right there, it'll even tell you when you're low on stock or out of stock or something and, and all those things. You can put SKUs as someone asked, you can put SKUs in here. Uh, you can group items, it's really fantastic. So it does a really great job of managing inventory. We're not talking about that today, but just know that that's the truth or that that's there, okay? Um, so let's focus on setting up items just for the purposes so that we can get onto invoicing and see how we're gonna actually ultimately invoice those out. Okay, so to create a new item, what you want to do is click on this new button at the top of the screen here. When you click on the new button, okay, you'll see four options presented to you. One says inventory, non-inventory, service, and bundle. Now, for our purposes, we're not going to talk about non-inventory and bundle items because they're actually not really true items linked to sales. Uh, non-inventory items are things like, uh, so they're almost like supplies, right? Or things incidental that you have to use when selling something. Like, so for example, if you sell iced coffee, you have plastic straws that go on the iced coffee, right? Okay, so that's considered a non uh, inventory item because I'm not actually selling the straw, it's just part of the thing that I'm ultimately selling. So if that makes sense, right? If, if it doesn't, don't worry about it, you could ignore it. A bundle is just a couple of items that you're putting together and then selling as one package. So I like to think of it like a gift basket. If I'm selling, you know, I can I can sell a box of cookies uh, and and some maybe, you know, uh, um, powdered like coffee grinds right in a bag. I can sell them separately or I can put them in a package together and sell them as one thing. That's what we call bundling. So you can create bundles in QuickBooks, which is really cool for purposes of this. Don't worry about it because we're not going to get into all that, but know that that's a thing that QuickBooks can do. So that leaves us with the other two, which is what I do want to talk about. Okay, That leaves us with the real two types of items, which we have inventory and which we have service. Okay, So inventory, of course, tracks the physical products that you buy and you sell and you, and you can resell. Okay. Services tracks the services that you provide to customers. So this is if you are an attorney and you're billing hours to your customers. That's where we would put it in. We would call it a service and create a service item based on that, okay? So as you can imagine, inventory is mostly used by retail and manufacturing businesses and services are mostly used by professional service firms like consulting or again, legal firms, accounting, kind of things like that, okay? All right. So. Bottom line though, we all have to use items. So whether you like it or not, you're stuck using this. So, all right. So keep putting those questions in there so we can answer them. All right. So let's talk about how to create a service item first because that's a little bit easier than inventory. So the first thing we need to do is again, obviously determine what type of item we're creating. Is it a service or is it an inventory item? So let's start with the service item. So what we're gonna do is click on service here and that's gonna bring up the service item creation screen. Okay, so again, lots of really great information that you can capture in QuickBooks. We're not gonna go through everything here because there's a lot of information, some really, really good stuff here. All right. Uh, all right, so of course, what you need to do first and foremost is put the name of the item. So what are you going to call this? So if you're an attorney, I'm going to call this billable hours or whatever, right? I'm going to I'm going to call this consulting services. If it's a flat fee, whatever you whatever you want to call it, right? All right, you're going to put the name of it there. And then we're going to jump down to descriptions. This is where we're going to describe to the customer what this is. This shows up on the invoice. Okay, so when you ultimately create your invoice, this description that you put here is what's going to show on the invoice. So make sure that you put a description that's appropriate in here. 
Okay, so like consultation fee or, or whatever you want to put in there. Okay. Next, what's the rate that you're selling it for? So if this is a service, you're probably doing it based on the hour or if it's a flat fee based on the, you know, the project fee or whatever. Okay, but what's the standard price or the standard rate that you charge per hour or whatever? Okay, you can put that information in here, which again is really great because you don't have to redo it over and over again. Okay, what revenue account, what income account do you want to tie it to when you go to look at your profit and loss statement, your income statement? Okay, what account do you want to see every time you sell this? Where do you want that money to start accumulating in your report? Okay, you want to put that information there. If you're not sure, this is a really great place to ask your bookkeeper or whoever is helping you do your accounting. What account do you think I should put this into? Okay, that's what we're here for to help you kind of think about those things, but that's the account you want to tie it to. Okay. And you can also see there's a couple other things, particularly I'll point out sales tax. It can also manage your sales taxes. So if there's a particular sales tax rate that you have to capture, um, then it, you can put all that information in here, which is really amazing and fantastic feature of QuickBooks in particular, and most other bookkeeping systems. All right. So when you're done there, just click the save and close button. And now we've created the service item. All right. So now. Let's quickly look at the inventory. I just realized my slide name is wrong. No, we already did a service item. Let's look at, let's now create an inventory item. So creating an inventory item, I will say, is pretty much the same as the service. There's just a little bit more questions because in this, an inventory is the actual physical thing that you first buy and have to hold in inventory and then you sell it. So there's a couple extra things you have to put in here in particular, and I'm not gonna go through all this in detail, this is, this is a different topic, but you have to put things like quantity on hand. What inventory asset account do you need to hold the inventory in? Okay, when you go to sell it, what's the cost that you had to pay for it? So we can ca calculate something called cost of goods sold and all that fun stuff here. Okay. Not the topic of today's webinar. So don't worry if you don't know what that is, you can reach out to me and I'm happy to explain it to you in more detail. If that applies to you. For our purposes, what we want to do is just like we did on the service side is we want to focus on this section right here. What are we selling? What's the description of the item? How much does it, how much are we selling it for? So what's the price that we're selling it for? And then what income account do we want to tie it to? Okay. That's all we want to focus on. Put that information in there, save and close it. And now you've created inventory items that you can now sell and create invoices off of. All right, so let's see. I saw the chat light up a few times. So what questions did we generate here? Let's see here. There's a, a question in the chat regarding um, different invoicing softwares. And so overall, the question was, you know, can other invoicing softwares or accounting softwares be used? And there was a question specifically about connecting with Wave. Um, or things that are like wave. Yeah, so one, um, I'll, I'll address that real quick. So um, QuickBooks is not, uh, QuickBooks ha has an invoicing module built in and it's really great. Um, that being said, um, sometimes if you need to do more sophisticated invoicing, there are other applications out there that can do even more sophisticated invoicing than QuickBooks does. So um, what you can do though is integrate them with QuickBooks. So I always recommend that you use QuickBooks as your main accounting program bookkeeping program. And then if you want to use a third party invoicing system to then have it sync with QuickBooks. Okay. So it becomes a partnership basically. For example, we use a program called Harvest, which is an invoicing program. And that's really all it does is all it does is invoice. So I use that and then we just have it push the invoices into QuickBooks and it integrates really nicely. Okay. So QuickBooks is not the end all be all. Sometimes you need other systems as well. And that's again, a whole nother topic that we can get into is your, your financial ecosystem. But to make it simple, if all you want to do is just use QuickBooks, that's perfectly fine too. And that's what I'm focusing on here. So hopefully that answers the question. All right, well, let's. Let me move on here. And if there's another question, feel free to, Kate, feel free to uh, interrupt me there. With one oh. more, which is, is there a special version of QuickBooks for businesses? Well, well, QuickBooks is for business, period. So it is a business, like you should not, like you wouldn't use QuickBooks to manage your personal finances. So QuickBooks is a business product, it's for business. So yeah, now there's different subscription levels of QuickBooks. 
So, you know, that's, that's another thing. If we have time, we can talk a little bit about that. But there's different subscription levels. So depending on what you need to do in your business, you want to subscribe to a different level of QuickBooks. Okay. Um, there's essentials plus, you know, advanced, all, all sorts of things here with different features. So, all right. Well, let's get to the heart of the matter. Finally, <laughs> generating invoices. I know it takes a second to actually get here, but we have to set all that up before you can actually generate an invoice. And honestly, I think that a lot of questions tend to come around creating customers or understanding that first you need to do that. And more importantly, then you need to create items. There's always been a lot of confusion around that, just sort of understanding what the purpose of that is. So hopefully now that makes more sense. Now that we've created customers and now that we have uh, created items, now we can generate an invoice. Okay, we've prepared ourselves to be able to do this. So, all right, here we go. So again, now that we have customers and items, we can start entering our sales. So there's philosophically two ways that you can make a sale, by the way. You can either require your customer to pay at the point of sale, or you can require your customers to pay at a different point in time. Okay, this will generate either a receipt or an invoice. So for our purposes, we're going to focus on generating an invoice, okay, which means that you're going to do something for someone now and they're going to pay later, particularly the focus of this webinar. If you're, con if you're doing um, contract services with the government, for example, you're providing a service for them now or providing them a product now, you're going to submit an invoice and they're going to pay you later for that service or that product, okay? So that's what we call an invoice. A receipt, just to contrast that is where they are required to pay you immediately. So for example, I walk into Starbucks, I order my mocha frappuccino and they're not gonna send me an invoice for that mocha frappuccino. They're gonna require that I slide my credit card right then and there, or you know, the app right then and there, pay for it. That's what we call a point of sale. Okay, so that's where you generate a receipt, not an invoice. So I just want you all to understand that's, a, that's an important distinction to make and understand when you're selling something, are you requiring the payment on the spot or are you invoicing them later? So, of course, we're focused on invoices in this webinar. All right. So let's jump into QuickBooks and talk about how to create an invoice. So on the top, we're going to go into QuickBooks and on the top left, we're going to hit that plus new button, which is how we create new transactions in QuickBooks. And then we're going to find the one that says invoice. And you can see here, there's a couple of different things that you can You'll see a sales receipt kind of halfway down there. So that's where that comes in. But we're going to create an invoice here. Okay. The screen pops up. So let's take a second. This is the invoice screen. Let's take a look, a quick tutorial, and see what we can do in the invoice screen. All right. So the first thing you want to do is select the customer that you're going to sell the thing to, that you're going to submit the invoice to. So again, We've already set up the customer ahead of time. This is why we had to set up customers first before we could do the invoicing. So if you select the down arrow there, you'll see, excuse me, a list of your customers. So select the appropriate, excuse me, customer that you're going to be selling, uh, that you're going to be invoicing and selling your service to. Okay. So you're going to select the, uh, the customer there. All right. Once you select the customer, it's going to actually pre-populate the invoice with all the information you've entered for them. So if you've entered in all their information, you're going to see it automatically puts in their billing address. It puts in their email. It puts in the terms that you're going to sell them for. And then based on that, it's automatically going to calculate the due date of the invoice. So this is why you want to take a second and just um, create those customers and fill in all that information. Okay. So... Um, next thing you want to focus on is the payment term. So if you haven't done that, or you need to adjust the payment terms for whatever reason, you want to make sure that you get that right. Very, very important when you're submitting an invoice, definitely into a invoicing system, which we'll look at, but also if you're sending the invoice to someone, you want to make sure that the proper dates show up on the invoice. So they know when they are expected to pay you. Also QuickBooks will use this information on the back end to start generating your receivables reports, which is the list of invoices that are outstanding. This is how QuickBooks knows if an invoice is past due or not. All right. So you definitely want to make sure that you put the right information in here. Okay. Next, we're going to get to the heart of the invoice, which is what you're actually selling them. This 
first box, you're going to click down and this is where you're going to select the item that you're selling to the customer. Again, this is why we had to create items first so that we know what we're selling to the customer. All right. So you select the item that you're selling there. Next, we're going to put a description in here. Okay, so what are we selling? Here's the description that pops up of what we're selling. Again, the customer will see that information. So make sure that you're putting an adequate description in there. All right. Next, we'll see some quantities. So, you know, how many things of this thing are you selling? So if it's hours, it could be the number of hours. If it's items, how many items? What's the rate? And then, of course, the amount calculates there as the total. And then you can add multiple things on an invoice. So one thing that you'll notice is that this is like a table. So you can add multiple items into one invoice so that you can create a whole list of here's everything in the invoice that I'm invoicing you for. Right. You'll see the summarized information down there, subtotal, if there's any tax that you have to charge for that, which is the topic of another webinar, you know, we can get into this taxes there. It'll calculate all that totals, all that stuff. All right. And then finally, they have this um, this message uh, section here. Now I'm going to pause for a second because if you are doing, uh, if you are submitting an invoice through a procurement portal, like an invoicing portal, like the DC government has and whatnot, this is a really great place to put the PO number. If you happen to have a PO number assigned to this invoice, that's a really good place to put that PO number. Okay. I'll talk about POs a little bit later in this webinar. They're very, very important. And you want to make sure that that information shows up somewhere on your invoice. Okay. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, hang on a second, I'll get to that. If you do know what I'm talking about, this is a good place to put your PO number. I recommend that. All right, and then finally, there's a place where you can put attachments. Again, if you're doing government invoicing uh, or you know Fortune 500 invoicing or whatever, um, if they've given you a PO, they've hopefully given you a PDF copy of that PO, you maybe wanna attach it here for your records. So if you ever have to pull that, you can pull it right here. It'll just be in attached to this invoice in your system. So, or if you've signed a sales contract or something, that's a really great place to put that to keep yourself organized. Okay, so really, really great place for that. All right, and when you're done, you can save it and it will save the invoice. And that's literally how you generate an invoice in QuickBooks. So it's pretty simple, okay? It's, it's actually pretty easy to generate an invoice in QuickBooks. As long as you've set up everything properly, it becomes pretty simple. The hard part is getting paid on it, which we'll get to in a second. All right. All right. So let's pause and see if there's any questions that have come up. Yeah, there have been three, and I think a couple of them you might be getting to. So I'm going to take them in reverse order. Um, someone mentioned that they have had issues with the content of message on invoice showing up for the customer, and they want to know if there's a setting that they need to change. Maybe uh, there is, I'll, I'll jump back here for one quick second. If you look at, um, there's sort of this little gear icon towards the top of the screen um, on the top right. So if you click that gear icon, it'll bring up some additional options for the invoice. And in there you can mess with the formatting and whatnot. So you may have to go in there and see if maybe it's turned off or something, but that, that could be why. Yeah. Thank you. And then we have two others, one of which I think I can address. Um, someone asked a question. Their, their question was, if you don't have QuickBooks, how long do you have to purchase that to be in compliance? Um, and I will just mention that there is no um, requirement that you use QuickBooks. In this training, we are recommending this or other tools, whether it is QuickBooks or other accounting software, um, to be supportive of you, but that is not a requirement. There's not a question of being in compliance um, for using accounting software. It's just highly recommended as a benefit to you. And then, um, I think the last question, and I think you're going to get to it, um, which is, does QuickBooks works with the district's invoice payment system? Oh, yeah, I will get to that in one second for sure. Yes, which actually is right here, <laughs> this next section. So, yes, hold that question. And then if you still have a question, hopefully I've addressed it. If not, I'll, I'll get into it. All right. So next, now you've generated your invoice. The next thing is you have to actually send it to someone and hopefully you get paid off of it, right? So you, you've so far, what we've done is we've set up the customer in QuickBooks, we've set up the items. Now we've actually generated an invoice. So we want to get, we've actually, which means that we've provided a service, we've done something, we've generated the invoice and now we've saved it in our system. The next step is to take that invoice and do something with it. We need to remit it to someone, okay? So this is where we're gonna get into options to send or submit invoices, okay? Uh, okay. 
All right, so there are a few different ways that you can submit an invoice in, in theory here, okay? So one, you can submit the invoice through your customer's private payment portal, which of course is one of the, the reasons why we're doing this webinar today. Okay, you can submit through an online portal. So for example, like, you know, the DC procurement portal, uh, or if, you, if there's a private entity portal, like uh, Lockheed Martin has a portal, or, you know, Booz Allen has a portal, right? So these sort of larger um, Fortune 1000 companies type, type deals tend to have their portals that manage other invoicing, okay? So that's one way that you can submit an invoice, okay? Another way, of course, is you can email your invoice to your customer directly, right? You can send a copy of it directly to them, particularly if they're small businesses or individuals that you're invoicing. Uh, sadly, I do not have a procurement portal of my own. So if someone does something for me, they have to email me the invoice and I, you know, I'll make sure it gets paid. Um, but hopefully one day I plan to have my own procurement portal. We'll see. Um, and, uh, and then the third way, of course, is you can print and snail mail a paper copy of the, of the invoice to your customer. Now you will see, I put there, no, just do not do that. In this day and age, that is not a good idea because things get lost and, and whatever. So I would not recommend that you, you, uh, print and postal mail your invoices anymore at least not as the primary method for getting your invoice out. There are much better ways to do that, which would literally be these first two, which is doing it electronically. Okay. Um, so that being said, let's quickly talk about emailing invoices and then we'll circle back to um, doing it through an online portal, uh, like the you know procurement portal and whatnot, okay? So as I said, um, when it comes to uh, emailing invoices, you know, that's one of the two methods that I recommend. So when it comes to that, you have two uh, primary options that you can use when it comes to emailing invoices. So one, you can save a copy of the invoice to your local computer and then email it uh, to your customer through your email box. So that's one thing that you can do, right? Um, or the better option, if you happen to have QuickBooks and other bookkeeping programs tend to have this feature as well, you can actually email the invoice through QuickBooks itself via their built-in email system, all right? So again, that's, that's a feature that QuickBooks definitely has, but I've noticed that other um, bookkeeping software out there does it as well, which is another reason why you wanna use an electronic uh, bookkeeping system to kind of do all this stuff. So I do recommend if you do use QuickBooks to actually use that method to actually send it through the QuickBooks email system, because what it will do is it will then track the activity that you have on the invoice. So it will track, for example, when you sent the invoice, when the customer received the invoice, and even when they opened the invoice, you can see that here on the left, it actually tracks all this information so you can see this, all right? So you can use this to further verify that the customer did in fact receive that invoice, okay? Furthermore, customers can also correspond with you on the invoice. They can type questions into the invoice and then you can respond to it. So it makes the conversation around invoicing a lot more uh, agile, okay? So, and as a bonus, by sending this invoice via QuickBooks, you also have the option to get paid via their merchant services, which hopefully means that you're going to get paid a lot faster as a result. Let me quickly talk about that because it's really, really important. All right. So again, this is for if you're not submitting it through an invoicing portal, I highly recommend that when you send the invoice, you give them the option to pay via a credit card or, or ACH transfer. Okay, so QuickBooks, for example, has a built-in merchant services offering, which means that it will accept these payments. It will make your customer's life so much easier if they can pay you like this and you will get your payment faster. Statistically speaking, it has been shown that if you offer this to your customers, you will get paid faster. And so whatever cost you have to incur is most likely worth it because you're not gonna spend your time chasing invoices or even them forgetting to pay you and you forgetting to collect your money. That's even worse. You'd rather make sure that you get your payment. And this is one way that you can ensure this. So 
I advise my clients on this all the time. Let's make sure that we are allowing our customers to pay us. And you can pro and you can pass the fee along to them, by the way, as long as they're okay with that. You can charge them an extra charge to pay the credit card. But most people appreciate that in today's world. And so that's something that I do recommend you think about. Okay, so you can sign up for merchant services and it will allow your customers to pay you. So this is what it looks like. <clears throat> So in QuickBooks in particular, you can set up merchant services. And then once you've set up the merchant services, you will now see an option to select, uh, to accept payment on, on invoice via credit card when you send it to the customer. So that's over here on the right. You'll see that little option pop up now. Now, when the customer receives the invoice, I'm sure you all have seen this, by the way, you probably received invoices where you see something like this. Well, this is where it's coming from. Okay, you're going to get an email that looks like this and it's going to say, hey, here's your invoice. And then you can click on it and it's going to pull up a full copy of the invoice. And then it's going to have a button there that says pay by credit card. And then you're going to fill in your credit card information. This is how that happens. If you set this up here, then this is the result. This is how that ends up happening. All right. And now your customers can pay you really fast. It's a fantastic way. I cannot say that enough. It's a fantastic way to make sure that you um, speed up your collection process and uh, reduce the risk of defaulting on invoices. Again, particularly for your small business clients or your individual client uh, customers. Okay, small business customers or individual customers. Make sure that you get paid. Okay. Actually, let me pause real quick because I saw the the chat kind of pop up a few times here. Any questions before I jump into the, the procurement portal side? Yeah, there's a there's a question of, um, you know, can you um, submit an invoice for a proposal to do work for customers? Can you send an invoice? Uh, so instead of an invoice, actually what you would do is send an estimate. <clears throat> so actually, let me, because that's a great question. Let me kind of jump way back here for a second. And okay. So if you see here where it says invoice, if you look two down, you'll see instead estimate. So that is what you would send. And an estimate looks pretty much like this screen. The only difference is that there's not a due date uh, and there's not an option obviously to collect credit card payment because there's no payment due on it. But it will basically be the mock invoice that you create for them. Okay, you can also use this, by the way, if they're asking you to generate a PO on, for them, which sometimes happens, um, that's a way that you can also generate that, is do an estimate, quote unquote, instead. Okay, what that does, by the way, is if you create the estimate, there will be an option then to actually convert it directly into an invoice when it's ready to be invoiced out. So it saves you a step there. So if you happen to be in that spot, you can generate the estimate. And then when you're ready, you just click a button and it'll automatically convert it into an invoice. All right. So it'll save you a step there. So yes, that's a great question. Yeah. Uh, anything else before we jump into portals? All right. One more that came in. In the rare okay. instance where a customer decides to pay in cash, is this something that you want to capture in the bookkeeping features of QuickBooks? Oh, yes. 100%. 100%. All the money that flows through your business needs to be captured even if it sort of like never gets into your bank account and you keep it as cash on hand which is common in like a retail setting you know someone pays you cash you're going to put it right into your cash register right so um you definitely want to make sure that you're capturing that cash more so so that you understand what you're selling and you can pull reports this becomes about being able to pull accurate reports so that you're looking at accurate information to make good decisions with your business. So absolutely 100% you wanna make sure that no matter how they're paying you, you are capturing that in your accounting system, okay? So yes, great, great question. All right, so let's talk about online portals because that's a lot of you are here for that. If not all of you are here for that, all right? So for government agencies and larger businesses like the Fortune 1000s and whatnot, they will most likely require that you submit your invoice via their online portal. You're not going to email your contact over there, your invoice necessarily. They're going to require that you put it through their online portal. Okay, why is that? So let's talk about that. Why? It's because they will require that a purchase order be produced and approved first. That's common. Okay, and that your invoice then be submitted and matched against that purchase order or PO. Okay, so 
the most efficient way of doing this, of course, is through a computerized system, which is why they have these online portals. That's really why they exist. So let's talk about purchase orders, because it's a really important concept if you don't know what a PO is. And I get this question all the time. Let's just briefly talk about what a PO is, because it has become your best friend. So what is a purchase order? Okay, A purchase order or a PO, um, which you'll hear, PO, um, it's a control system used by larger organizations to ensure that they don't pay anything that's not authorized. Okay, it's to ensure that they don't make a payment that has not been authorized. Could you imagine if you're a large company, you have thousands of invoices probably coming in a day. How do you know which ones are, are approved? How do you know which ones are bogus invoices and people are scamming you, right? Okay, so because these organizations are so large, again, they could have hundreds or thousands of people in the organization purchasing things on a daily basis to get their jobs done, right? So to control all this, they need to generate a purchase order, which explains in detail what they're purchasing, why they need it, how much it'll cost, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So the person who's working at the company fills out a PO. Here's what I'm buying. This is why, this is how much it's going to cost. This is who I'm buying it for, blah, 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 blah. Okay. They then send that purchase order over to their finance department or whoever approves their purchases, okay, for approval. So then the finance department sees the purchase order, they read through it and they say, yes, we approve this, you are authorized to do this thing, okay? And then they stamp it and say, yes, this is, this is approved. At that point, they will enter their PO nowadays, they will enter that PO into their computerized payment system. They will put in the system, this purchase has now been authorized by us, okay? And they'll usually attach uh, a control number to it and, and whatnot, okay? And then typically they will then email you a copy of that PO and that's for you to know that you are now authorized to do this thing for that company, okay? Now, when you submit your invoice to that organization, you submit it through their portal, what it does is you put in this is my invoice and this is the PO that I'm invoicing against. And then the computer system kind of do, 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 you know, yes, okay, I see the PO number, okay, yep, yeah, okay, this is what you said you're gonna do, this is what, okay, yeah, I see then your invoice now, okay, great, it's a match. It, and then it automatically approve the payment of your invoice because it matched it against the PO, all right? That's why POs are so important. And that's why you will see them and that's why you will get copies of them. So people are confused. I got a PO, what do I do with this thing? First, attach it to your invoice in QuickBooks, keep a copy of it so that when you go to invoice it in the system, you know what number to put in there. It'll authenticate your invoice so that you can get paid. And that's ultimately what we want. We want you to get paid. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully it reduces the mystery of what a PO is, all right? All right, when you all get to Fortune 1000 status, remember that. Make sure you do POs for your, your vendors as well, all right? Okay, so there are many different iterations of online portals that exist, of course, all right? We can't go into all of them, but they all tend to work the same way. So because we are working with DSLVD, we're gonna do the DC procurement portal here, all right? The DC vendor portal, all right? I figured that would be a good one to look at here. So, um, so let's kind of take a look at what a vendor port, a vendor payment portal tends to look like. Okay, so again, we're going to look at the DC portal, but they all tend to kind of have the same. Um, they will all uh, ask for the same pieces of information generally. Okay, because you know it's that's that's what they need. All right. So by the way, um, I'm not going to obviously go into super detail on the DC vendor portal. The, the DC vendor portal site website has some fantastic um, tutorials on there, both video and PDF. I mean, really, really fantastic, well done. So if you get into trouble or you have additional questions, um, that's also a great place, of course, to look in, and get more information. So that being said, let me take you on a quick tour here. All right. So first thing you're gonna see here is you wanna double check some of the information that you see when you jump into the portal. So again, whether it's DC or Lockheed Martin or you know the federal government, whoever. Okay. 
you are going to typically see some control information. You're going to see what's your purchase order number. You want to double check to make sure that you're invoicing against the right PO because that's how it's going to authenticate you. You're going to see the amount that you're authorized to invoice. You definitely want to make sure that that number is right because if it's not right, you're not going to get, you know, hopefully it's, well, maybe it's more, I don't know. But if it's less, you definitely want to reach out and say, hey, this isn't right. And sometimes they're not right, right? I mean, people key this stuff in. So if there's an error, you want to double check and make sure that that information is accurate. If you have a contract, which you probably do, there'll be a contract number, okay? So you want to just double check and make sure that this information is accurate before you proceed with doing the invoice. Otherwise, it's going to probably kick it out of the system and you're going to have to, you know, figure out what's wrong and go through all that to, to correct it, all right? So better get it right the first time. All right, next thing you wanna do is put in your invoice number. So people tend to get confused about this, okay? This is the number that you generate out of QuickBooks when you create your own invoice. So it doesn't matter what number this is, this is actually your control number, but they wanna know this so that they can reference it in their payment so they know that they've paid you on invoice, blah, blah, blah. But this is your number that you put in QuickBooks. So when you generate your invoice in QuickBooks, it will assign a number to that invoice in QuickBooks. That's the number that you put there, okay? So that's all that is, okay? It's your number that you put there. <clears throat> their number is the PO number and the contract number. That's what their number is that they assign, all right? Now, that being said, you also want to attach a copy of the invoice that you generated in QuickBooks. So most every system I've seen will have an option for you to upload additional documents. And sometimes they'll ask for additional things depending on what you're doing. But one of the things that you want to upload is a PDF copy of the invoice that you generated in QuickBooks. Okay, it's a really good practice to do that. All right, so that they can also take a look at the invoice and, and add it to their record. It's just, it's a good idea, okay? So you can upload that. Okay, now we get to the line items of the invoice. This is just like when we did our invoices. These are the items that you're selling to them. It's parallel, okay? It's the same thing. What are you selling to them? When we look at government contracts or large contracts, they tend to have things called CLINs, okay? Contract line item number, C-L-I-N. We call them CLINs, okay, in the world of accounting. But they'll have CLINs. And each line item will delineate a specific thing that you're selling to them. What you want to do is input that information into the invoicing system. And again, when you do your invoicing QuickBooks, do it the exact same way. Line by line, what am I selling here? Okay, that will come from the contract itself. So you're going to put in the CLINs, okay, quantity and whatnot, and that will automatically calculate the total amount of the invoice. And that's it. That's pretty much all you need to do. It's actually really, really simple to submit an invoice through an online portal. It looks intimidating, but this literally is a carbon copy of what your invoice in QuickBooks looks like, okay, for all intents and purposes. So just do it. Just pretend it's QuickBooks and fill it out just as you would an invoice in QuickBooks, all right? And when you're done, hit the submit button, cross your fingers, hope there's no errors, <laughs> and, and wait for your payment. Okay, so that's what I wanted to say on online portals. So I hope that answered the question earlier. But let's go to any questions and see if there's any lingering questions here. Danny, I haven't seen any questions coming in the chat, but I did want to just share a couple of pieces um, that might be additionally helpful. Um, you know, Manny talked about getting your invoice correct when you submit it in the portal. Um, and just so that you know, if your invoice is incorrect, um, if the information that you put in the portal and on the document don't align, if the dates don't align, or if the numbers don't align, the agency will have to reject that. And so if they reject it, then you'll have to submit something entirely new. It'll have to have a new invoice number and you'll have to generate a new invoice for that. And so that is where some people can get stuck. If, if your information is not aligning for what you in, put in, in the portal versus what you put onto that document that you generated from QuickBooks or that you uploaded. And so that's one of the, the big pieces. And to just say a couple more pieces of information of like what goes after invoice, um, it's different by agency how many exact approvals that they have, but that invoice, both the process to create the purchase order 
and the process to create the in, or to pay the invoice go through multiple levels of approval in DC government. In DSLBD, we have three DSLBD side approvals that have to go through, and then we have two at the office of the chief financial officer. So it is being looked at again and again and again for all the controls. Um, I don't want to take up too much more time. I do want to put things back over to Manny, um, but we do know that there are some. If you're having challenges with this, definitely reach out. Um, you know, if it's on the the very DC side, um, we might be able to add some clarification or point you to somebody else at the Procurement Center of Excellence to add additional clarification. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. And I, I will also say one more thing on that. Everything you just said is true also of many other um, systems like that. So again, because we, we do a lot of like, you know, these these large invoices. So um, and we're submitting them through all sorts of systems. So I've seen probably every system out there at this point. But that's true also of the federal government, of, you know, Fortune 1000s. Yeah, many levels of approval. They could get rejected, so you want to make sure that all the information is accurate before you submit it for sure. Otherwise, it just you'll get paid. It's just you may have to go through a little headache to get paid. So you know, who wants to do that? Right? Um, so, with that, let's talk about getting paid. All right. So, hopefully, once you've submitted that information, everything is accurate. Now you can get paid. All right. So, here's the deal. If you um, are, uh, if you are using a merchant service. Uh, then, uh, remember, I mentioned the merchant services before, if you get paid via merchant services, then the payment that you get against the invoice will be automatically entered into QuickBooks and matched. And so that's really great. All right. So for that reason, if you're not doing a payment portal or, or anything, um, if you're using, working with a small business or an individual, I do recommend using merchant services for this reason so that it will automatically reconcile the payments against the invoice. But. If you are receiving a payment via a paper check or even through a payment portal and they're they're electronically paying you through that portal, you will actually have to match the payment manually against your invoice in QuickBooks. OK, so this is an important step, because if you don't take this step, then QuickBooks won't know which of your invoices have actually been paid or not. And then it's going to start bugging you and saying, hey, these invoices are past due. And you're going to maybe think I need to reach out to these and find out why they haven't paid me when in reality, they may have paid you actually. Okay. So you want to make sure that you, after you get your payment in the door, that you match it in QuickBooks and close that loop. Okay. Very, very, very important. So again, if you use merchant services and they pay you via credit card, <clears throat> you have no additional step here. It will automatically do that. But if you if you get paid via paper check, or again, if, if you know they're wiring you the money, you do have to take this step. All right. So let's talk about what you need to do here. So to record an invoice payment in QuickBooks, we're gonna go now to this plus new button. Now we're gonna select this option that says receive payment. And now the receive payment screen shows up here. Okay, and this is what it looks like. So the very first thing you're gonna do is again, select the customer who's paying you the money here. All right, you're gonna select that. And once you do a list of all their outstanding invoices is now gonna show up down in the bottom of the screen. So these are all the invoices that QuickBooks says they haven't paid you on yet. Okay, so you're gonna find, and by the way, double check and make sure that this is accurate because maybe you missed a payment, right? So what you wanna do is check the box of the invoice or the invoices that they're paying you. Okay, so maybe they're paying you for one invoice, maybe they're paying you for multiple invoices, whatever. Select the box, and then it's gonna automatically assume that they're paying you in full for that one invoice. Now, if they happen to be making a partial payment on the invoice or whatever, you can override the amount, but you know it, it pretty much assumes that they're paying you for the entire invoice here, okay? So you're gonna enter in that information, up at the top, it's going to then show you the total payment that you're receiving. You want to just double check and make sure that this amount here matches the check or the amount going into your bank. You know, you want to make sure that those numbers, uh, you know, line up, that everything is accurate there. Okay. And then you also want to put in the date of the payment. Very important because you want to keep a record of when this invoice was actually paid for you. Now, I will tell you on a strategic side, that's also really good information to start paying attention to <clears throat> so that you start understanding how long it takes for people to pay you. 
particularly customer by customer. Because if you want to start planning out your cash and understanding when cash is going to come in the door, you may want to know how long does it take on average for this person to pay me? Because if it takes them 90 days to pay me and I send them an invoice today, I can already guess that I'm not going to get that payment for another 90 days. So that helps me start planning my cash, which is super, of course, super, super important to do. Okay. So take a second and put the accurate information in there. Another reason why you want to use an electronic bookkeeping system. All right. Now you can put in next the payment method. How did they pay you? Are they paying you by check, electronic fund transfer, you know, whatever. Okay. You can put that information in there. And then what account are they depositing? What amount, what bank account are you putting the money into? So your checking account, savings account, okay, what bank account is the money ultimately going into? You can put that information there. And then when you're done, click the save and new button. And now what that does is that <clears throat> then matches the payment against the invoice and it closes it out in QuickBooks. And it says this invoice that you sent out has now been paid in full and we're done. It's a closed deal. Okay. There's nothing left there and that's it. And that's how you record a payment in QuickBooks. All right. So very, very important step. Don't forget to do that. I will say that again, because when we take over books, this is a big area where a lot of books, um, uh, need a lot of cleanup is making sure that those payments actually got recorded against the invoice itself. Okay. Super, super, super important. Also, if you get a payment against an invoice, do not record it as more income. It's not income to you. You've already recorded the income when you created the invoice. This is a payment against that invoice. If you record it as another income, you're going to get double taxed. You will pay taxes twice on that income. And that is something you do not want. I promise you. No one wants to pay taxes twice. Okay. Manny, we have one quick question on generating invoices that have come in, which is about the invoice numbers. You know, are there any either hard rules or just general advice on, on sort of the structure around invoice numbers, particularly if you end up having invoices rejected and therefore have to submit a new invoice number? Like, how should people think about that? Oh, well, I will say um, what, one thing that we've done. Uh, so in general, no, uh, the invoice numbers, that's literally for you. And it's a made up number. So, you know, you can number it however you want to number it. You know, you can create your own little system, however you want to see that. That's literally just for you. Um, if you submit an invoice through an, an invoicing system and it ends up getting rejected, depending on the system, and some systems have controls around this, some systems require you put a whole new number. Um, some systems, um, can allow you to just put an R like we've done that before, where we'll just put like an R at the end, which like stands for revised. So we've done that before. So it kind of depends on the system. Um, but you know, marking it just a little bit different or like, you know, a or B or C or something like that. So yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. All right. Well, let's jump into the last section and then we'll do some open Q and a and <clears throat> we'll wrap up here. All right, so let's talk about reports. So we've spent all our time putting all this amazing, fantastic information into our bookkeeping system. And one of the benefits of inputting all this information is now we can pull report, very useful reports out of that system that help us really understand our business. So this is getting a little bit more into the strategy side of the world here, okay? So let's take a quick look at some of the reports that we can pull now that we've entered invoices and whatnot. So in QuickBooks, we want to jump to the reports center, which is this little button right here. Click on reports, and then it brings us into what we call our report center. So there are a ton of reports that you can pull in QuickBooks. You please, please, please on your own time, go through this and see what amazing information you can pull out of QuickBooks. You will be instantly hooked. I promise. If you start noticing the information you can get out of here, that will really help you run your business. I mean, it's fantastic. All right. Our purposes, we're going to focus on two sections here. It's a section that says who owes you, which is basically all your receivables. So these are your open invoices. Who still owes you money? They, right, you sent them an invoice and they haven't paid you. So who owes you? And then the other one is the sales and customer section, which gives you reports about who's buying from you and what you're selling and whatnot. So, of course, really great information there. So let's first look at this one, which is the open invoices section. Okay, open invoices 
is a list of all the invoices that are still open, right? So in other words, it's a list of all the customers who still owe you money. I don't know about you, but I look at this all the time. I want to make sure everyone's paying me. Okay. So, so please look at this report all the time and make sure you're collecting on them. Okay. Um, so it's going to tell you a couple of things, the name of the customer, right? And then all the invoices that that customer has opened for you. So you can see here, some customers have more than one invoice open, right? So the date of the invoice, when did you generate the invoice? Okay. What's the due date of the invoice? So the date you sent it and then the day they were supposed to pay you but they haven't yet, all right? So you can start seeing who's really past due and so you can follow up with them. How much do they owe you on the invoice still, okay? Maybe they made a partial payment. So this is just the balance left on the invoice that they have to pay you, all right? So really important stuff there. And of course, you wanna make sure that you're looking at this constantly so that you can follow up with them. I will tell you in my experience, I've been doing this 20 plus years, 90% of the reason why you haven't been paid on an invoice is not because they don't want to pay you. It's because they forgot to pay you. They forgot to pay you. So you have to remind people, Hey, are you going to pay me? When are you going to pay me? Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. I need to pay you. Happens all the time. So make sure that you're following up with people. Okay. Better yet, make it easy for them to pay you and just allow them to pay via credit card, okay? Makes it easy. If you're submitting a course through you know, a, a vendor portal, then it's gonna be all electronically handled anyways, all right? So make sure you're following up. All right, next one let's look at real quick, sales by customer detail report, another really fantastic report. This one shows you all the invoices you sent to a particular customer. So if you wanna quickly look and see what invoices have I sent over time to people, then you can look at this here and it'll give you a nice listing, okay? So you can, um, really what I do is make sure, use this report to make sure I have sent out all the invoices that I think I was supposed to. Let me tell you, one thing that happens a lot with small businesses, you forget to invoice. You know, we're so busy doing the work that sometimes we forget to turn around and send the invoice. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, it's happened to me. Right? We get so busy and then we think, you know, three months later, did I ever send that invoice to them? You know, all of a sudden they pop in our head. Did I ever? Okay, well, now you can check this report and you can see, did I send the invoice? Okay, well, here it is. So I must have sent it, right? And then you can double check to make sure it's paid. All right. So you'll see a list of the invoices, of course, that, um, that we've sent to the uh, customers. So again, we see their name here. Okay, list of the, of the the dates we've sent the invoices, the amount of the invoice, you know, the total amount that we've invoiced to them over a period of time. That's something you may also want to look at as well, and whatnot. Okay, so really, really fantastic information there. All right, so of course there are tons of report. You can see there's tons and tons and tons of reports here. So I do encourage you to play with that on your own time and find the reports that you want to look at on a regular basis to make sure that your business is running along smoothly. So super important to be able to do this on your own, okay? All right, and that's it. We have hit our conclusion. So I'm gonna quickly wrap up and then let's do a couple of questions here. So really, happy selling, that's all I gotta say. So we hit our end. You hopefully know how to submit your invoices. You'll be able to submit them, get paid, make sure you're keeping on top of all this. So get out there, sell, sell, sell. Uh, make the money that you need to make to grow your business and, you know, keep going. Here's my information. If you need it, um, feel free to reach out with any questions you have. Happy to help you out um, to make sure that you are doing everything you need to do to do your invoicing. All right. And with that, I will open up for questions. More questions. Annie, thank you so much. I'm going to encourage folks to be putting questions in the chat. And while we wait to see if we have any come in, I, I have one which is sort of framing this in sort of the entire perspective as people think a little bit about their books. This is obviously a very important component of this, you know, but if someone was like, all right, I'm about to just start with online accounting. Um, is this, is this the place they would start? Is there, is this one of the places that they would start? Does, does it matter in that bigger perspective of just like getting their books in order? Well, um, so you mean like, like using QuickBooks, you mean? Yeah. So they, they see this, they like it. They go and get started on it. Do they start with invoicing and in the process they were here? Do they need to start somewhere else? Is it agnostic? 
Yeah, I would say, um, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if you're, if you're brand new in business, so here, let's take this in chunks. If you, you've been in business for a while and you don't have an electronic accounting system, I would definitely, as soon as possible, start moving your stuff over to an electronic system. Okay. That being said, you'll have transactions in and out. <clears throat> Forget about the past. Just start today. And I tell these space clients all the time who are transitioning over into a system. You know, you kind of get caught up in that, but I have so many years worth of information or whatever. I'm like, don't worry about that. Just start today. Start with what's happening today and move forward. And you can do them in pieces. So start with maybe recording your expenses. You know, expenses are pretty easy to record. I spent money on this and whatnot. But if you do invoicing, if you're a business that does invoicing, 100% start using QuickBooks to do your invoicing so you can track it. If you want to track anything in your business, you 100% want to track the money that, that people owe you because that's the work that you're doing. And I want to make sure that you get paid on that. So start with that first, you know, and then work in all the pieces. If you're a brand new business, maybe you don't have that many invoices yet. Start with tracking your expenses again from day one. Start tracking how much you're spending in your business that will become invaluable information to you. All right. Any other questions here? Let's see. And I'm kind of looking through the chat as well. We talked about POs, receivables. All right. Well, if anyone does have any additional questions, obviously feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to help. Um, and yeah, just make sure. Um, oh, wait. Oh, I got a question. I speak at an event. I'm planning to get paid for it. A check is sent to me. I, re I receive upon it. And you create an invoice to match it for record keeping. Yes. So ideally, if you if you're doing a service, like in this case, you're doing a speaking event. Really, when you sign the contract is when you should generate the invoice in QuickBooks. So at that point, you should go ahead and generate the invoice in QuickBooks. And then you when you receive the payment, you just hit it against the the, the thing. That being said, if you forget to do it and all of a sudden a check comes in the door, and, oh yeah, I forgot to record it. Again, same, do the same process, create the invoice first and then match the payment against the invoice. So you always want to go in that order. Okay. Create the invoice and then match the payment, create the invoice and match payment. More than anything, it also creates the habit for you to, um, to just remind yourself to do it. Okay. So I would recommend that. Uh, question, can it track information for tax purposes? This is 1099. Absolutely. 100%. On the vendor side, all the payments that you're making to your vendors, oh yeah, it'll track all that. So you can do 1099s, of course. Absolutely. Uh, how do I get payments faster from slow paying clients? Again, uh, if you wanna speed up payments from, from customers, we call that receivables turnover. So if you wanna speed up your receivable turnover rate and get paid faster, a couple of things you can do. Allow them to pay via credit card, I promise you that will definitely speed up your receivables okay people tend to pay faster we've statistically seen if you if you make it easy for them to pay you another thing you can do an auto payment you can ask for their credit card information up front <clears throat> and you can store it in your system pci compliant of course and uh or pmi compliant and then um and get them to agree that you will charge them automatically for the service once you've completed it Okay, so there's a couple of legal things you have to do there, but you know, but you can do it, and uh, that way you actually don't technically have receivables because you control when you receive the payment. So that's another really great thing that I recommend that you look into doing. Okay, so uh, those are some things, and obviously just stay on top of people who owe you money. Like I said, ninety percent of the time they're not paying you because they forgot. So if you can remind them, gently remind them periodically, hey, just a gentle reminder that this invoice is still outstanding. Can I just know when that'll get paid? You'll probably, oh yeah, I forgot. Let me, let me send you a check right now. People will feel bad, honestly, that they didn't pay you. I do it. I feel bad when I forget to pay people, but it happens, you know, it happens on occasion, okay? Oh, and then there was the subscription levels question that had been earlier on. Oh, uh, for QuickBooks. So yeah, there's a few different subscriptions. There's a, 
there's essentials, there's plus, there's advanced. There's also, I think, simple start. That's another one now that's kind of a newer one. So um, kind of depending on what you need to do, um, some of the QuickBooks levels will allow you to like do more advanced reporting. Some of them will allow you to do payroll. Some of them will allow you to do um, even uh, like bill tracking and things like that. So what I recommend is jumping on the Intuit website, intuit.com or qbo.intuit.com and just check out, you know, they have one of those little graphs that show you, you know, this is what you get for this level and this is what you get for this level. And then just kind of think about, well, what do I really need? And of course, just reach out and ask if, if you have any questions about that. And, you know, I'm happy to help you kind of think about, you know, what would be best for you. Um, I want to go back and say one quick thing about getting paid um, that might be specific to district government contracts or subcontracts, because um, we know that there are always ongoing questions with that. Um, we do know that having your invoice in order, having all that information correct is an important part of you getting paid, which is why we wanted to be able to provide this training to any, you know, if you have provided proper invoices, um, either to your DC contract or for a subcontract to a prime and are still facing challenges getting paid, definitely feel free to reach out to DSLBD. Pending the circumstances, we may be able to report, it may be different parts of the agency that may be able to provide support depending on what's going on. Um, but if you are facing an issue, definitely feel free to reach out to us and we will see what we can do to get you connected to some support. Cool. I know, man, okay. we are past time. Um, I want to say, I want to give you a chance to have a last word, but first I want to say thank you. Um, I want to say thank you for this today. Thank you to everyone who was here with us today. This session was recorded um, and we will be making this information available to everyone who is registered. This will probably also go up on our YouTube, um, but a, a huge thank you, Manny. And then if you have any closing thoughts for people before we stop the recording, please, please do share those. Yeah. Uh Final thought, just make sure that you are keeping track of your, your bookkeeping. Super, super, super important, obviously, for all the reasons that we talked about and more. So.